Welcome to the introduction to DuraCloud training video. This tutorial will demonstrate how to begin using the DuraCloud hosted service available from the DuraSpace not-for-profit organization. So the first step of the live demonstration is explaining how you would go about getting your DuraCloud personal user profile. And to do that, you would go to the DuraCloud management console, which is located at manage.duracloud.org. And the management console um, is a separate web application that allows you to manage not only your personal user profile, but also your DuraCloud in instance, which if you become a customer of DuraCloud and have, have the, um, a customer of the managed service, you would have your own individual DuraCloud instance running that you would then be able to manage. So this is what you would do uh, via the management console. So to create a profile, um, you would simply go to the middle of the screen and click create new profile. I won't walk you through that tedious process, um, but I will log into the management console and show you what you would see uh, if you were a customer of the managed service. So the first thing that you're presented with is information about your individual DuraCloud instance that's running. Um, in particular, you can see the host name on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, in this case, I uh, have access to and will be using the demo.duracloud.org instance today, but um, assuming you were a customer, it would be uh, your institution name.duracloud.org. Um, moving to the right-hand side of the screen, uh, the Launch DuraCloud Administrator button will take you directly into your DuraCloud instance, so you can add content, run services, etc., and that's the heart of the demo today, but I wanted to go over this management console first. Uh, again, moving again to the right of the screen, you can see the version of the DuraCloud software that your instance is running, and also the status. Obviously, the instance is running. Um, as an administrator, you have the option to stop, start, and also upgrade your DuraCloud instance. So when DuraCloud releases new versions of the software, as we will next week, you will have the control of when you upgrade your DuraCloud instance to the new software. We will make it immediately available to all of our customers. And the last thing I wanted to demonstrate today in the Management Console is how you would add um, or give permissions to other users to be able to access your DuraCloud instance, add content, run services, etc. So to do that, you would simply click on the Manage Users and Roles button that I'm highlighting in the right-hand side of the screen. And while my screen catches up, um, you'll be presented with first a list of active users and from the list, these are the people that have access to that demo DuraCloud instance. They have the permission to log in to my, to my demo instance and add content, run services, etc. But how did they get to be active users? Let me move down the screen for just a moment. Um, the Management Console uses a, um, an invite process. So to add users to your DuraCloud account, you would simply insert the email address for the user, click Invite, the Management Console will automatically generate a unique URL and an invitation form that would then be sent to that user. They would click on the URL within the invitation email that they received, follow the directions, and then that information would then pop up into the active users area. So you would then um, be able to control what type of access they had in their DuraCloud instance uh, in terms of what role they served, as well as you could be able to remove them from the account uh, down the line if you no longer wanted them to have access to your DuraCloud instance. So it's really just as simple as sending out an invite to add users to your DuraCloud account um, and then clicking remove if you no longer wanted them to have access. So moving back to the main screen of the Management Console and moving into the meat of the demo, um, I'm going to click Launch DuraCloud Administrator and that will take me directly to my DuraCloud instance. Now you can certainly uh, and type demo.duracloud.org into a URL and bypass the management console uh, completely if you so choose. That's another option. Um, but using the management console and clicking that button will automatically log you in. And what you see in front of you right now is what we call the DuraCloud Administrator interface or Dura Admin. This is the web application that sits on top of your content regardless of what storage providers you've chosen to use with DuraCloud as well as the interface that allows you to run services on top of your content. So it's the web interface for your DuraCloud instance and it's your individual DuraCloud instance. So moving on to the left hand side of the screen um, we have tabbed navigation. So we have four tabs that you can see and I'll highlight those in sequence. We have the dashboard, spaces, services, and administration tab. 
I'm going to start with the Spaces tab because, in my view, it's one of the most important tabs. Um, if you have content stored in your DuraCloud account, it will automatically open up the Spaces tab. And, and what do I mean exactly by Spaces? What, what is that word? Uh, in DuraCloud Speak, Spaces is analogous to a folder or a container of some variety. Essentially, a DuraCloud space uh, holds the content that you've stored in DuraCloud. And you can see the entire list of spaces here on the left-hand side of my screen in the Spaces column. Um, a note about the orientation of the screen. Uh, on the left-hand side are the spaces, and as you move uh, to the right of your screen in each of the, the subsequent panels, you get um, deeper and deeper, uh, more information about a particular item. So essentially, you drill down from left to right and get more information as you go. Uh, moving back up for a moment, under the Spaces tab, you can see the Amazon Web Services logo. And then moving directly to the right of that, you can see that the provider selected is Amazon S3. And what that means is that you're viewing content that's currently stored within Amazon, uh, the Amazon's commercial cloud, commercial cloud store. However, uh, with this store cloud instance, we also have Rackspace available. So to change what provider and the content you're viewing, you'd simply choose it from the drop down on the right hand side of your screen. And as I do that and let the screen load, I'll pause for a moment. Moving back on the left hand side of your screen underneath the Spaces tab, you can see that the, the logo changed to the Rackspace cloud. And you can see that your provider on the right hand side of the screen is now Rackspace. And also, you may have noticed that indeed my Spaces list is much smaller than it was before. And uh, for the purposes of this demo, I've made my two storage areas uh, different. So within DuraCloud, you can choose to store um, copies of your content and keep them synchronized between both Amazon and Rackspace if you so choose. We have services that will synchronize between the two different commercial cloud storage providers. Or you can also choose to store a subset of your content in Rackspace as a secondary store. Have all of your content in the primary store and then choose to store a subset within Rackspace if you so choose. Um, we leave it up to whatever use case you're trying to to best meet uh, with DuraCloud. So moving back to the Amazon storage area um, and drilling down a little bit further, I'm going to click on one of these spaces to select it. And you know a space is selected when it has a dark gray background behind it. The center panel then becomes a list of the content items that are stored within that space. And um, as I mentioned before, the orientation of getting more detail, the rightmost panel becomes the space detail area. And within that, you can see a couple different um, pieces of information about a DuraCloud space. In this particular instance, you can see my Carissa Uploads folder has been selected. Um, it's an open space versus closed, and you have the option to change that uh, within this area. And open and closed uh, relates to what Michelle was talking about earlier in terms of URL access, HTTP access to content items. If a space is open, all the content items that are held within it, so all four items here, would be available via HTTP. A person could access them very easily if they had the URL. If the space was closed, however, the content items that are, are held within the space that I'm highlighting now would not be available via HTTP. If a, if a person was able to find a link to this Chapter 12 MP3, um, they would be presented with a DuraCloud login screen. So that's, that's again, if you have a closed space, the content items that are held within it are then essentially password protected and no longer available. So moving down in the Space Details panel on the right-hand side of your screen, you can add a content item via the Add Content Item button or delete the space entirely. Um, there's some metadata we have uh, view, viewable here about the space in terms of the amount of content, content items that are stored in the space, when the space was created, and you can also add metadata and tags at a space level. You can add as many as you'd like. Um, moving over to the content items now, uh, to select a content item again, it's as simple as clicking on that content item. And the space detail column now becomes the content detail on the right hand side of your screen. And the, the layout is very similar. You are presented with the name of the content item right under the content detail um, heading. One thing I wanted to note, um, if you hover over that janeaustin.jpg um, image, you can see that that is indeed a link and that is the publicly available URL for that content item. So this is true for any content item. You can always find the publicly available URL. 
uh, by hovering over, <clears throat> hovering over the name of that content item. Moving down, you can edit, download, view, delete the content item if you so choose. And then further down the screen, you can see there's a nice little preview panel, which right now uh, you get a, just a, <laughs> a silly little mountain clipart image. But if we had the image server service running, which I'll explain a little bit more in detail later, you would see an actual preview of this of the uh, Jane Austen uh, JPEG that I have added to this content area. So again, the reason why you don't see that right now is because I don't have the service running to do so. Moving down again, you can see details about this individual content item, the space where it's currently located, its size, um, its modified date, either the last time it was changed or the date it was added, as well as the checksum value. And I wanted to pause for a moment to explain uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, a checksum is analogous to DNA or a fingerprint. It's an individual identifying piece of information for each individual content item. And this checksum value is calculated by DuraCloud as soon as you transfer that content item into DuraCloud. And then it's stored with that uh, as metadata with that content item uh, for the length of its existence in DuraCloud. And this is important for our health checkup services, which I'll explain uh, in just a moment. So moving down, again, you can add metadata and tags on a content item uh, level basis as well, as many as you'd like. Um, I mentioned before, and this is also true in the center panel, you can add a content item. Um, let me just bring up the, the navigation for that. If you choose Add Content Item, it's a file-by-file file transfer or upload. You can simply enter the item ID and MIME type and then choose uh, the, the file on your local machine that you'd like to upload. If you have a lot of content that you'd like to transfer to DuraCloud, uh, we have two other options available. For, uh, for developers uh, in the group listening today, we have uh, the fully documented DuraCloud REST API so that you can write programmatic scripts to upload uh, content to DuraCloud and you can also interface at a programmatic level. And then for those people who aren't so uh, developer uh, like, like myself, uh, we have something known as the synchronization utility which allows you to do one, uh, a couple things depending on your use case. You can use the synchronization tool as a one-off bulk upload and uh, this utility is a command line tool that you would run on your local machine. Point it to local uh, folder or directory of local content that it would then transfer to your DuraCloud instance. Or if you so choose, if you have a local directory that you'd like to keep essentially mirrored in DuraCloud or consistently synchronized in DuraCloud, you could keep the synchronization tool running um, and it would automatically propagate uh, changes to your local directory to DuraCloud as well. As I mentioned, uh, creating essentially a mirror or a secondary copy in the cloud. So again, you could use the sync tool in two ways, um, keeping a mirrored copy if you'd like or as a one-off batch upload uh, utility. It has the capability to do either of those. So moving out of the spaces area and over to the services, and I'll wait a moment while this loads so I don't get ahead of myself. The first thing you'll notice here on the left-hand panel of the screen are the currently deployed services. And by deployed, I mean they're currently running. Um, the Bit Integrity Checker service under the list has, uh, has was recently run, hence the reason it is in the deployed state. Um, if you go over on the right-hand side of your screen, similar to the spaces area, you'll see the detail panel. In this case, it's the detail for the Bit Integrity Checker service that's running. And you can see directly under that, you can undeploy the service if you'd like. And then below that are all the details about the configuration information for this service. To see the entire list of available services that are not deployed at this moment, but you could certainly deploy if you choose, uh, click on the Available Services button in the center of your screen. And again, I'll wait a moment while my screen capture catches up. So after you click the Available Services button, you'll get an enti the entire list of DuraCloud services available. Um, I'm going to go through and explain each of them quickly. Uh, the Bit Integrity and Checker services, both the regular and the bulk, um, as Michelle was explaining uh, earlier, allow you to check the health of your content that's stored in DuraCloud. And from a more basic level, what, do, what this service does is it will pull the stored checksum value that I mentioned is stored with the content item when it's transferred into DuraCloud the first time. And it will also recalculate the checksum value and then compare the stored versus the newly calculated checksum. And then the service itself will print out a report. 
and tell you whether those checksum values matched or whether there's been a mismatch um, that the service has found. And then you can uh, determine whether that file needs to be replaced or, um, or not. Um, again, and this will really help you check the health of your content to determine if individual content items have experienced some sort of bit rot or integrity loss. The difference between the regular and the bulk tools, there's a few that are um, that have the bulk word tagged onto them, um, essentially is the amount of content that you're running them over. The bulk tools are designed for one terabyte and above content, um, and the regular tools are one terabyte and below. The Bit Integrity Checker, Checker Tools service is uh, simply a, a smattering of a couple different tools that you could potentially run related to Bit Integrity. Um, if you wanted, for instance, just a file of all of the stored checksum values for your content in DuraCloud, uh, we have a tool for that. If you wanted to compare two reports, for instance, um, you could do that via the Bit Integrity Checker Tool service as well. So moving down to our two duplicate services, um, the first one, Duplicate on Demand, is what I usually tongue-in-cheek call copy and paste. Um, the developers don't particularly like me typically calling it that because it simplifies the service. But what it does is it creates an exact copy of content you have stored in one storage area and then moves that copy over to a secondary area. So you have two, ha you have two exact replica copies within DuraCloud. And the use case that I typically uh, use to explain this service is if you start using DuraCloud and you add content to the Amazon storage area and decide two or three months down the line that you've created a really great collection of content and you'd like to back it up to another storage provider as, as a means of preservation so you have two copies of that content, you would run the duplicate on demand service to copy all of the content uh, in one storage area. In this example, the, uh, would, the area would be Amazon and then move the copy over to Rackspace. So you have two copies, one in Amazon and one in Rackspace. The Duplicate on Change service has a little bit different use case. Um, this is for people who know right off the bat that they'd like to have two copies, one in Amazon and one in Rackspace, for instance. And what you would do is deploy this service before you've even added content to DuraCloud. And the service will start watching the primary storage area and automatically add changes of content from the primary area to the secondary area. So you can simply transfer your content to DuraCloud and this service will automatically create two copies for you. And assuming you keep this service running, it will keep those copies synchronized. So again, this service will keep your Amazon and your Rackspace storage areas exactly synchronized. So you have two exact copies stored within DuraCloud, just within different commercial storage providers uh, if, you, if you choose. Moving down the list, the image server service, as I mentioned before, allows you to serve images uh, within DuraCloud. Um, but I think more importantly, it allows you to then embed the links for those, those images within your own application. Uh, our image server services leverages, leverages the open source Jatoka uh, image server that's available. And I will show you how to deploy the service in just a moment. Uh, moving down the list, the Image Transformer service, the regular and the bulk. Um, again, pretty straightforward. It allows you to transform one image file type to another uh, if you so choose. And again, the bulk is for uh, large amounts of content, one terabyte and above. And last on the list is the Media Streamer service. And similar to the Image Server, it allows you to stream uh, audio and media files within your DuraCloud instance. But again, more importantly, it allows you to embed those streams uh, within your own applications. So with both of these, the image server and media streamer, uh, you could really leverage DuraCloud as a, an image server or a media uh, streaming server if you so choose as well. So to deploy any of these services, it's as simple as clicking on the service, uh, choosing next here in the bottom right part of the screen, and then the next uh, phase of this is the configuration page. And for some services, there are a couple different configuration options. Uh, for the image server, you simply say, uh, I want to run the service. And uh, to do that, you'd simply click Deploy again here in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. You'll see a little status indicator box in the middle of your screen with our neon green indicator bar. And as soon as the image server service has deployed, it will appear in the list of services here on the left-hand column of your screen. And I'll wait a moment while my screen capture catches up.
<clears throat> and I may have timed out because I haven't done anything in a while, so I'm just going to hit reload for a moment. So what happens when you talk too long in a demo? <laughs> you get logged out. So moving back to the dashboard tab, and the last one I wanted to, to discuss with you today, <clears throat> The dashboard essentially is a nice snapshot of the content that you have stored within DuraCloud. So you can see both storage and service uh, reporting features here. First, uh, first I'll show you the storage area. Um, what this does is gives you a breakout of not only the size of content uh, you have stored within DuraCloud at the moment, but also the total number of files. And then you can drill down uh, based on space. Uh, to view further information. So for instance, if I was interested in the photo archive space here, you simply click on that pie piece and you can see a further breakout uh, in terms of, again, file type by size and by count as well. All of the data that's used to create these pie, pie graphs is available in the data table right here in the kind of middle right part of your screen, so if you're not interested in the pie graphs but would like the tabular data used to create them, uh, it's available there. You can also download the full report, so for all of the, the tables and uh, pie charts that you see, you can download uh, that again here in the top right hand side of your screen. And you can also uh, sort back through chronologically in time to see how your DuraCloud instance, the content within it, has changed. So moving back uh, to the beginning of August, you can see that I had about 3 gigabytes of content and almost 2,000 files, so quite a bit more content than I do today. And again, uh, the interaction is the same. You can drill down as you could before and also see the data that's comprised of these pie charts. Uh, moving over to the Services tab, um, first you're presented with a list of currently installed services, and you can see my image server service did actually deploy. Um, to view more information about the installed services, you can click on either of the names and you can see the configuration information for, uh, for that service that's currently running. And also, uh, if you click the completed icon up here, you can see a list of all of the services that you've run historically uh, while using DuraCloud. And uh, we know that list would get quite long, so here on the right hand side of your screen you have the ability to filter the results. You can um, filter via a date range if you're interested only in, in services that have run within the past week, for instance. Uh, you can also filter based on the status of uh, the service run, so maybe you're only interested in successful service runs. Or uh, at the very end, you can also filter based on the service type. So for instance, if you're only interested in how many times you've run the Bit Integrity Checker service, uh, you can sort just for those. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that again you can view all of the configuration options if you just click on uh, any of these rows here. So uh, what I wanted to point out for instance this Bit Integrity Checker service that was run on September 16th about a week ago. I can view all of the information uh, for that service run in terms of what space it was run over, um, how many particular content items were checked, etc. So it's a great way for you to see historically uh, how you've used your DuraCloud instance, and also if you wanted to replicate any of these service runs, you can certainly do that as well. For more information about DuraCloud, please visit www.duracloud.org.